Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to use English to present my slides. Hi, everyone. I'm Fog Dong from Bentai Mao. And today, I want to talk about from model to market, what's the missing link in scaling open source models on cloud? So there's no doubt that AI is once again catching everyone's eyes. This picture illustrates the newly founded AI companies. But even without this picture, I believe we all acknowledge that the rise of the AI and also the ensuing opportunities. In fact, the AI-related talk at this year's KubeCon is more than past. However, with the emergence uh, uh, advancement of AI and also the emergence of new opportunities, not every company can afford or need to build their own models. Thankfully, the community and the open source had already provided numerous trainer models for us to utilize. Compared to uh, closed models, uh, open source models is winner in customizability, data privacy, and also cost efficiency. If I want to build an AI product, I can leverage the power of open source model, fine tuning them with my own data set, and to deploy it in my own environment to make sure the data privacy, and also only pay for the cost that the model need. However, from model to application, uh, the way is not always straightforward. Uh, as a developer, if I want to leverage the power of open source model, for example, Llama, to build an application that can generate uh, advertising proposals for my customers, how long is the road from my open source model that I just pulled to an application that ready for use on cloud? So if we delve deeper into this, we can consider model as ML codes. But for an application, an application is just way more complex than just ML codes. It also needs configuration, uh, data collection, serving infrastructure, and more. And ML code is just a part of it. So in order to bridge the gap between the model and the application, we need first find an intermediate station, an artifact, so that we can uh, divide the whole process into two parts. The first one is build, and the second one is deploy. So for the build challenges, we need to handle the challenges like model packaging, environment management, model versioning, and more. And for the deployment, we need to handle the challenges like uh, environment consistency, scalability, observability, and, and more. And the deploy challenges might look familiar to us so since those are the challenges that the Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystems try to resolve. Right, so now that we know the challenges, let's try to resolve them. So we need to first handle the building pro problem. Uh, we need to somehow pack our model, our dependencies, everything we need into something that can be actually deployed. So that's where Bento ML comes to the play. Bento ML is an open source Python framework that can help you to build your application. So what Bento means is like, uh, it's a, a typical bento is a traditional Asian food that contains rice, vegetable, meat, everything you need uh, for, your, for, for your meal. And that's also bento's position for your AI application. Will help you to, uh, to bundle your API, your dependency, your model, and every other file you need for your AI application into this one deployable unit, a bento. So uh, we all know that basically all the models are more like a compute intensive workflow, a workload. Uh, but when a model needs to be transformed into an application, we might need to handle like a concurrent request scenario. So that's when it uh, converts into an IO intensive. And that's also the reason why we separate the API server and the runner in your bento. So a typical bento is basically contains three parts. API server, model runner, and also the environment. And in the API server, we can do the work like pre-processing, add your business code, expose your matrix, define your API, basically all the uh, I.O. intensive work here. And for the model runner, that's where you can load your model that built with a different framework like PyTorch or TensorFlow, and make sure they're using the right resources. 
Another thing is important in this architecture is how we gonna organize your bento. So if you want to build your bento, the first thing you need to do is to write a bento file. And a bento file is like a Docker file, but slightly different. Uh, in your bento file, you can specify the version of the dependencies, the entry point of your API server and runner, and basically all the configurations you care about. So once a bento is built, we will by default store, store it in your local registry. But you can also use command like bento map push to push, push your bento to S3 or other central registry. So these are the solutions that we provide in the building process. We divide everything you need for your AI and application into API server and model runner. In the same time, your environment and configurations is managed by the bento file. And we also provide ecological command like bento map build or push to help you easily build your bento and manage the version of the bento as well as the models. Right, so after the bento is built, we now need to deploy it in your production. And we do provide the command like bento serve to serve the bento locally for test. But when it comes to the production, we need to ha leverage the power of Cloud Native and Kubernetes for more stability deploy. So we can now uh, deploy the bento as a microservice. So in this picture, the left side uh, of the picture depicts how a developer uh, build a bento. So the simplest bento just consists bento file.yaml, uh, service.py, which contains your API server and runner, and also the models you'll need. And we can now build it into a bento and push it to the registry. And to want to deploy it in the uh, Kubernetes, we need two more controllers work within the cluster. The first one is an image builder controller. It will watch a customer resource called bento request. And this controller will help you automatically to build your bento into an image. By default, we will generate a Docker file for you, which contains all the dependencies you need in your, uh, in your bento. But you can also specify and customize it in your uh, bento file. So after Bento is built, we can now deploy it. Uh, so another controller here, the, the Bento deployment controller, will use the image they just built, and uh, it will reconcile the resource called Bento deployment. And this controller will create all the resources for your AI application. For example, the service, the HPA, and also the deployment of AI API server and runner, which can be scaled independently. So all the text here are open source and list here. Um, Yatai is the dashboard that we provided for our users so that we can easily uh, uh, serve the bento in the cluster. So but by the way, the, what Yatai means is like, uh, it's a place uh, somewhere you can sell your bento box. Right, so knowing the challenges and also the solutions doesn't make this way less daunting. It's easy to get stuck somewhere along the way. So this year, we saw the trends of open source LLL models. And the question suddenly occurs to us, are all the AI developers can easily serve the open source language models on cloud? So that with all the discussion that we had earlier, we not only need the knowledge of ML, but also the text of cloud native. So that's the initial idea that why we're going to uh, open source this project called Open LLM in this year. Uh, the initial idea of this project is we're going to bring all the best practice in the industry and to help our user to easily start the popular LLMs with one single command, just like this. So, uh, but today is not like a deep dive into this project. Since Open LLM is exactly the project that start with open source model and can be deployed in production in the end. So today we'll use it as a case study so that we can learn from the other challenges with that we learn from it. Right, so when it comes to produc productionizing LLMs, Leo Lama had so many concerns like the scalability, the throughput, uh, the, the operability, the latency, and also the cost. Those are the challenges that we must resolve uh, during the way we, we produc productionizing LLMs. 
So in the development of open LLM project, uh, if we want to make this project as the best practice of language models, we need first prepack and, and also pre-optimize the LLMs for our users. In other words, we need first overcome some unique challenges of language models and pack it as an artifact, a bento. So a bento for LLM is slightly different from a normal bento. First, we incorporate SSE support in your API server so that we, our language model can respond more quickly. And also, we want to leverage the power of the community and open source. So for example, VLLM is the project that's doing amazing work with uh, page attention and other optimization to make our language models improve its throughput and also latency. Uh, and in addition, like uh, quantization tags like GPTQ also improves the, uh, also help our uh, LLMs to work with less resources. So if you are using open LLM, uh, you can just use the command that lists here. And those commands will actually apply, uh, apply these optim optimizations in your model runner layer. For example, we can just switch the different backend from VLLM to TRT for your model runner. And to improve more, we also want to introduce uh, continuous batching. So for a typical bento, uh, when multiple requests is coming through, the API server will scale first and then redirect the request to our runner. And the, the runner will actually batches all the requests to model. But that's not sufficient enough for our language models. So that's why we need continuous batching. Basically, we just have one giant batch that can cycle all the requests. So those are the uh, challenges we resolved when we uh, build our language models into a bento. And the optimization is mostly applied in the runner layer. And this is like the real case when you want to uh, build your model, in, uh, make it sufficient for production, the work you need to be done during the building process. And after the uh, bento is built uh, and we want to deploy it in the production, uh, it is noteworthy that 95 percent of the model are idle most of the time, yet the reserved instance allocated for them are generating costs every moment. So that's why when it comes to the production, we need to leverage the power of serverless. So if there's no request, we want our replicas to be zero so that we can prevent the GPU waste. So in order to do this, we need first introduce Keda into this picture. Keda is the Kubernetes event-based autoscaler. With the help of Keda and also HPA, we can now easily scale our replicas from or down to zero. So to make this work, we also need three more new components here. The interceptor, the scaler, and also the proxy container in your API server and runner. So if there's no request and all the replicas is zero, and a new request is coming through. So first, this request will redirect to our interceptor. And the interceptor will cache the request into a queue. And now the scaler will work as an external scaler to tell Keda that it's time to change the replica. And when Keda is done his work, uh, the interceptor will uh, the proxy container in API server will uh, re consume the request from the queue and redirect to the API server. And once again, API server will trigger the scaler of the runner. So in this case, we leverage the power of serverless to improve the scalability and also save the cost. Right, so now that our journey has reached to its destination, we start with using Bento ML to build and pack your model into Bentos. We manage the merge version of your Bento and your model. And when it comes to the deploy deployment, we containerize your Bento into an OCI image. And when it needs to be deployed in the production, uh, we use serverless to make sure that your deployment is not only scalable, but also cost efficiency. So from model to app, it's not easy. Today, I just want to share with you our approach to, doing, to do this. 
but I believe there's a tons of other ways out there in the community. Our approach is just one of them. So if you're interested in this, please join our community and we can have further discussion. Yeah, so that's all of my slides today. Thank you everyone for the listening.